as we all know that cancer is having uh, a devastating impact uh, on our society quite some time globally too. And uh, there is a very alarming statistic that states that as of right now, one in three people will have cancer some part of time in their life. And that statistic again alarmingly increases to two in three people by the time we reach 2030. So it is pretty much it's become an epidemic. And it's fast uh, overtaking heart disease as the number one killer. But there is some hope, uh, there is uh, a silver lining. We've seen that in the past decade, there are a lot of countries where uh, cancer deaths have kind of stabilized and have gone down. And all this, you know, seems like, I knew about all these statistics, uh, but it's a completely different ballgame when you have someone very close to you uh, diagnosed with the disease. And I'm sure anyone over here who's had a friend, a relative, a child, who's been diagnosed with this disease, it's very difficult to kind of encapsulate or articulate what you go through. Uh, for those of you who don't know, in 2014, uh, my son, uh, he was three years, ten months, he was diagnosed with a very rare case of kidney cancer. Uh, it's called a Wilms tumor. Uh, it happens, out of all pediatric cases, it happens to roughly uh, two to three percent of kids under the age of four. And my son happened to be part of that unfortunate person of kids. Um, as a parent, as a caregiver, in our family, uh, you know, we were shattered. We went through a lot of different emotions, uh, pain, guilt, despair, uh, depression. But we were willing to fight this battle, and we were going to go. You know, we knew we had to go in for the long haul, and we were going to do everything that we could uh, to save our son's life. Um, we knew the treatment is going to continue for, you know, six, seven months, and after that, there is. Uh, a fighter survival rate, so it's a battle that is still going on. Um, but through this journey, there is, of course, the financial aspect, there is the medical protocol that we have to attend to. But there is one fundamental thing that got us through this um, that was the information, that was the knowledge that we got on our side when, we, when our son got cancer. Uh, it was the, the reading, uh, the information that we got through different sites, through the internet, through books. And that made it so much more easier uh, in, in this recuperation, um, in this treatment. And I would imagine, you know, for someone like us in our family, we are well educated. We come from an affluent society in Mumbai, um, have access to doctors, internet, but we were so ignorant about things that the disease does or what it was. I would imagine what would go through people in small towns in, in a place uh, like India. There are misconceptions that I've heard people feel cancer is contagious. Even people in Mumbai, it's, it's surprising people feel it's cancer is contagious. There are social stigmas attached to it. In many cases in cancer, I've heard that people sometimes <coughs> don't take timely chemotherapy <coughs> sessions because they take it lightly. Uh, in many cases, they feel, oh, cancer means death. So <coughs> it is a dead end. So they don't even go ahead and get the treatment. When actually, it's very heartening to know that uh, in pediatric cancers, there's a good 70 to 75 success rate as far as cancer goes. Uh, in my son's case, there was a 90 to 95% success rate. So this is what this initiative is all about. It, it takes that information out there, and it, and it gives it to everyone. Uh, routine screening, these are the things that I learned along with. I knew nothing about cancer, but you know, routine screenings for, for our family right now, uh, I feel for the rest of our families also out there, if you spend on things like insurance, on a car, on a house, uh, you don't have a good health care plan. You should actually get down to screening uh, your relatives, your, your family, and once a year. So God forbid there's something growing in your body, you can check it in time. And that reduces the cost of treatment. At the same time, you check something on and which has a good prognosis. You have cancer where you can catch it in the first and second stage. And that's, that's what makes it more curable. In our son's case, we got it in the second stage. Um, I've realized through the, uh, the readings that I've done that, you know, again, a very, very minuscule percentage of cancers, 10% of cancers are genetic. A huge percentage is environmentally related. So a lot of things in our lifestyle, which again, this pushes all this information out. You can put out your questions through email to them, and they can bring that information forth to you. Any, any query, any problem that you have, you can bring forth. Stress management, I mean, we have that in our culture. Meditation, yoga, we have, you know, getting good sleep, eating well. I mean, our staple diet, we have one of the best 
foods that actually are uh, they can help the body recuperate. For example, turmeric is a superfood. That's, that's even the medical, medical community is acknowledging that. So um, we did some of the things. Obviously, they're going to take you through what the details are. But I wish them all the very best. Uh, doctors here, people like Times Network, and I hope with each passing month, year, yeah, this initiative gets bigger and better. And um, you know, maybe I'm a bit too optimistic, but I'm looking, you know, hopeful. Then the next couple of decades, we look back and say that you know, cancer was a thing of the past, and we eradicated from our society. So, um, all the very best.